This video explains the steps you could take when planning your answers to the questions following your initial review of the exam. We'll focus on one question as the steps we're going to explain apply to all of them. So to start, whichever question you're doing, begin by reviewing the first few sentences on the right hand side of the screen to get a feel for the question context. Once you've done that, the next step is to open the requirements for the question. With the requirements open, now also open the word processor, which you can find under the response options. The reason for this is that you're going to copy the requirements into the word processor in order to begin your analysis and lay out the structure of your answer. Note that the various windows in the exam environment can be moved around and resized and now is a good time to arrange your screen to make it easier to use. We'll put the requirements on the left and the word processor on the right. Obviously you can lay the screen out in whichever way works best for you but either way it's important that you don't cover up the top or bottom toolbars. Note that if you close the word processor the window is only minimised. You don't need to worry that you're losing any work. Now copy all the requirement text into the word processor. When you do copy the requirement across, watch out for the formatting and reformat the text if you need to. This may require you to separate out the sub-requirements to make them clearer for reading. And also sets out your answer structure. You can prepare your final answers underneath each sub-requirement, keeping in mind the need for appropriate subheadings to make your answer easier to read and mark. Next, we recommend you go on to analyse each requirement in detail. This is in order to identify the specific actions the examiner expects you to carry out in your response. You can start by adding emphasis to key words by making them bold. We recommend you do this to the verbs and any calculation requirements, as well as the word and. This exercise ensures that you capture every element that's required in your final answer. Here we're only bolding keywords in part A, however you should repeat this for the whole question. Before you go on to the next part, now is a good time to estimate the division of marks to help you allocate your time and effort accordingly. This is particularly useful in part A here, where there are calculations as well as explanations. In part A, you need to explain how goodwill should have been calculated with suitable workings. In the strategic professional exams, there's an emphasis on being able to explain points. So here you might want to give more weight to your explanation rather than your workings. This is how you may decide that there are six marks available for the explanation and four marks for supporting calculations. Although you might find this task a little difficult right now, rest assured that the more you practice answering questions, the better feel you'll have for how examiners split the marks. Let's assume you've split the marks for the whole requirement as appropriate. The next step is to analyse the exhibits. So now you should close the requirements window in order to take a look at the exhibits. As you saw earlier, the exhibits are signposted in the question. We're going to access the exhibits for part A. You can see that two exhibits are signposted acquisition of house and acquisition of Mac. We'll only look at acquisition of house here, though do note that in some questions you may have to use more than one exhibit at the same time. Here is the acquisition of house exhibit. 
As you view an exhibit, read it carefully and actively. A technique we suggest for this is that you identify and highlight key issues and colour code the different types. So, here you might highlight issues related to calculations in yellow. And then use a different colour, say green, to highlight issues related to the explanation or discussion. To finish, it's good practice to take that highlighted text and insert it into the relevant part of your answer, as this ensures you refer to the appropriate part of the exhibit in your final response. This might involve adding subheadings as required, as you can see here. As you work through the requirements and exhibits one by one, this technique will help you build a plan for your answer. In fact, one of the advantages of a computer-based exam is that you can use the functional tools to help you analyse and answer questions effectively and efficiently. Finally, it's worth remembering that the information given in the requirements and exhibits is there to help you, so use it to your advantage.